friends, in this video, I am going to discuss the four indicators of progress in higher education, namely access, equity, inclusiveness, and quality in higher education. First of all, I would like to give a brief overview of establishment of modern universities in India. After a large gap of 600 years, after the destruction of old Nalanda University, modern universities in India were established. Thus, there was a gap of 600 years in the field of higher education in India. Universities of Bombay, Calcutta and Madras were all founded in 1857. University of Allahabad was established in 1887. These universities began as purely examining bodies and continued to be so till the beginning of the 20th century. The Indian Universities Commission was appointed in 1902 and the Indian Universities Act was passed in 1904. The Government Resolution on Educational Policy in 1913 accepted the need for establishing more universities. Six new universities came into existence between 1913 and 1921. Benar Singh University, founded by Pandit Madan Mohan Malavia, was incorporated in 1916. Sri Dundo Keshav Karve founded the SNDT Indian Women's University in 1916. The first five women graduated from this university in the year 1921. Two princely states also established universities for their regions, the Mysore University in 1916 and Osmani University in 1918. A teaching, unitary and largely residential university was established at Lucknow in the year 1920. Aligarh Muslim University founded by Sir Syed Ahmad Khan, was incorporated in 1920. After 1921, when education was transferred to Indian control, the establishment of universities was much faster. In total, there were 19 universities in India before independence. After independence, there has been a rapid expansion. In the 21st century, there has been phenomenal expansion of higher education institutions in India. There were 190 universities in India in the year 19, 1991. A total of 1,168 universities, 45,473 colleges, and 12,002 standalone institutions were registered in AISSHE, that is All India Survey on Higher Education 2021-22, which is the latest survey available. Standalone institutions include Polytechnic Colleges, Colleges of Education, Colleges of Nursing, PGDM Colleges, etc. As per the report of All India Survey on Higher Education 2021-22, out of the 1,168 universities registered, 685 are government managed, central government 2,040, and state governments 445. 10 universities are private deemed universities which are aided, and 473 are private universities unaided. You can see here, sir. 40.5% of the total are private universities unaided, which is a very large number. And this percentage is increasing year by year. There are 17 universities exclusively for women. Notably, government universities contribute 73.7% of total enrollment and private universities account for 263 0.3% of total enrollment. Out of 
42,825 responded colleges to the AISHE survey 2021-22, 21.5% colleges are government colleges, 13.2% are private colleges which are aided, 65.3% are private colleges unaided. It may be noted that the private unaided colleges already outnumbered the colleges in the government sector. This is the scenario. However, government colleges contribute 34.8% of total enrollment. Private aided colleges account for 20.6% of enrollment, whereas the private unaided colleges account for only 44.6% of total enrollment. Student enrollment in higher education, I would like to discuss now. As per the AASHE All India Survey in Higher Education 2021-22, total enrollment of students in higher education is 4.33 crore. Female enrollment in higher education is 2.07 crore, that is 47.8% of the total. Of the 4.33 crore students enrolled, 15.3% belong to scheduled caste, 6.3% belong to scheduled tribe, 37.8% are from other backward classes, and the remaining 40.6% students are from other communities. Now, I would like to quote the vision of a university given by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru in his convocation address in Allahabad University. His vision of a university is as his follows. A university stands for humanism, for tolerance, for reason, for progress, for the adventure of ideas and for the search for truth. It stands for the onward march of the human race towards even higher objectives. If the universities discharge their duty adequately, then it is well with the nation and with the people. But if the temple of learning itself becomes a home of narrow bigotry and petty objectives, how then will the nation prosper and people grow in stature? Now, I would like to discuss the four indicators of progress in higher education, namely access, equity, inclusiveness, and quality. Access. Access means the opportunity for admission to a large number of talented students with prerequisite knowledge and aptitude. Equity. Equity means no talented person shall be denied access to opportunities in higher education on the grounds of economic and social backwardness within the constitutional framework. Inclusiveness. Students having different intellectual capabilities, belonging to different states, regions, religions, communities, Different social backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, differently abled students, students with special needs studied together in the same class in the university. Then let us see what is quality. Quality of higher education. Quality relates to the educational process and learning experiences of students which ultimately lead to standards. The curriculum the infrastructural facilities, teaching methods implemented, assessment methods used, the overall student's learning experience process. This reflects the quality. Then standards, the student's learning outcomes, student's learning outcomes in the program, in the cognitive domain related to thinking process, psychomotor domain, related to physical activities and affective domain 
related to emotions, attitudes and beliefs, feelings, that is the product. Process, if it is implemented, then it leads to the product. The teachers have to design and implement the process in order to achieve the desired product. Inclusiveness must be taken into consideration. This is a big challenge and serious issue in the country, sir. Access to higher education is measured in terms of gross enrollment ratio, GR. How do we define GR, gross enrollment ratio? The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, describes gross enrollment ratio as the total enrollment within a country in a specific level of education, regardless of age, expressed as a percentage of the population in the official age group corresponding to this level of education. Now, according to All India Survey of Higher Education 2021-22 document, latest survey, the overall gross enrollment ratio, GR, in higher education India is 28.4%, which is calculated for 20, 18 to 23 years of age group. Please note that it was just 0.4% at the time of independence. But now, during 2021-22, it was 28.4%. For scheduled cash, it is 25.9%. And for scheduled tribes, it is 21.2% as compared to the national GER of 28.4%. GER for overall females is 28.5%, slightly higher than GER of males. GER for SC females is 26.0%, slightly higher than GER of SC males. GER for ST Females is 20.9 percent, slightly lower than GER of ST males. The increase in GER in higher education is an indicator of increase of access to higher education. This can be seen as a positive effect of the reforms. Then what are the challenges and issues? Quality of graduates produced is not up to the mark. It's a serious issue, sir, in the country now. It's a big challenge that needs immediate attention of all the concerned. Employability of the graduates is a serious issue. It is not unemployment, which is a major problem. It is the question of unemployability, which is a bigger crisis. Dr. Kalam said while addressing the 43rd convocation of Bangalore University in Bangalore. According to the Indian Skills Report 2024 by the VBOX India, the findings are a result of the evaluation of 3.88 lakhs candidates who took the VBOX National Employability Test, WNET, across academic institutions in India. The overall young employability in India is 51.25%. This is to state that more than 51.25% of test takers across all domains of learning scored 60% or above in the WNET proctored survey. Nevertheless, the actual employment of the youth does not match with the above figure of 51.25%. The reason may be the mismatch between the knowledge and skills of the graduates produced and the knowledge and skill set required by the employing organizations. Reforms towards equity in higher education, reservation policy of the governments as per the constitutional provision to provide access to higher education promotes equity. Scholarships for socially less privileged students, differently abled students and meritorious students nurture equity. Are the scholarships adequate in number? Is the scholarship amount adequate for the study? What about equity? In a large number of private institutions, many of which are commercial and charging exorbitant fees, this is a very important issue that must be addressed by both the central 
and the state governments. There is a need to continue improving access to higher education while also stressing the importance of doing it in conjunction with improvements in quality, social equity, and inclusiveness. Hence, the 12th plan adopted a holistic approach to the issues of expansion, equity, and excellence so that expansion is not just about accommodating ever large numbers of students, but it is also about providing diverse choices of subjects, levels, and institutions while ensuring a minimum standard of academic quality and providing the opportunity to pursue higher education to all the sections of society, particularly the disadvantaged. The above point has also been emphasized in NEP 2020. Pressed by budgetary constraints, the governments appear to have decided on profit-oriented privatization of higher education as a solution. Political and business classes with significant overlap between the two see higher education as a source of lucrative private returns on investment. There is little theoretical or empirical evidence that supports the prospects of success of a for-profit model in building quality higher education. This I have quoted from the reference Higher Education Reforms in India by Sham Sundar. Is equity possible when the private commercial institutions outnumber the government institutions of higher education? There is no evidence in the world that the commercial institutions have contributed to equity, inclusiveness, and quality in higher education altogether. Is there not a need to increase the SCSR, Corporate Social Responsibility Funding, to establish private, not-for-profit universities which can promote equity? Universities with public-private partnership, not profit-based, are also welcome. Urgent reform in this direction is needed to improve equity, inclusiveness, and quality in higher education. Right now, there are no trends in this direction. Reforms towards inclusiveness in higher education. Inclusiveness in all levels of education is given top priority by the central government and all the state governments. Upgradation of existing polytechnics to integrate the persons with disabilities. The objective of the scheme is to promote education and training of persons with disabilities by integrating them in the mainstream of technical and vocational education and skill development programs through formal and non-formal programs. Right now, inclusiveness in, is implemented in all the government institutions, in all the disciplines of knowledge, but not in majority of the private institutions. Inclusiveness is not only physical inclusion, and giving some reservation to the disadvantaged sections, including differently abled students. It is much more than that. Greater autonomy in choosing courses, appropriate teaching methods, and assessment methods are very much necessary. All the programs in the university must improve the self-efficacy of these students. The students must gain confidence that they are at par with all other peers with naturally existing differences in potential and aptitudes. They must be able to excel in their field of interest and choice. They must be so well nurtured. That is important, sir. The Rashtri Yeravichitar Siksha Abhyan Rosa document 2013 stated, instead of increasing access in a positive way, the affiliation system creates a highly centralized and inefficient institutional structure which does not allow its constants any room for creativity in teaching, learning, curriculum development, or research. Quality can enhancement can only be brought about by giving greater autonomy and accountability to the institutions. The NEP 2020 gives the direction for more and more autonomous colleges and dispensing away with the affiliation system in higher education in a phased manner. Since education helps develop the minds of the young, the key input to quality education 
is the availability of high quality intellects to teach the availability of the high quality intellects to teach instruct expose explore innovate and inspire the students to achieve this end colleges must attract thoughtful creative and fearless minds from each year's cohort to careers in education with an abundance of talent in teaching and scholarship a culture of innovation may be built that will serve as the basis for a vibrant economy society and polity this is the quotation by shamsundar from higher education reforms in india he is from hill universities some working paper july 2010 teachers should be the best minds in the country quoted by dr sarvepalli ravakrishna conclusion all the four indicators namely access equity inclusiveness and quality are equally important for the progress of higher education while increasing access to higher education both the central and state governments must simultaneously focus on doing justice to equity inclusiveness and quality the government policies must encourage the establishment of private not for profit universities based on funds from corporate social responsibility and public philanthropy in order to promote access equity inclusiveness and quality in higher education the governmental policies also must ensure the equity inclusiveness and quality in higher education in all other private colleges and universities thank you very much